What's going on guys? In my last video, I fabricated a base structure for my CNC machine. It's all very rough. Today, I built a Y-axis carriage, I attached some motors, and we're getting this thing moving under its own power. Check it out. Getting a little bit excited. You can even see I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I want to see this x-axis work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the x-axis motors. Seems like a good time, even though I know it's not. So cut up a couple of motor plates. I put one hole about where the center of the motor is going to be. And the best way to do the layout on these is with the center hole in place. You put the motor on and you can mark out the other four holes and then drill them out. So you don't really have to do any layout. You just have to match drill it. Pretty good little setup. This is totally not what I should be doing right now. I should definitely be sleeping, but for some reason, I just absolutely had to see this thing moving under its own power today. So I threw it together. This is absolutely not the actual setup, but we have a belt on there. It's just clamped under that chunk of metal. It's definitely not the way it's supposed to go. Got the idler over there. Everything's still real loose, no adjustment at all, but this thing cranks. To compensate for the belt height, which is based off of motor placement, I added a couple of spacer blocks to the x-axis carriages, and I even put belt clamps on top of them so when I get everything ready to go, I can go ahead and clamp the belt down. So right now, I actually really like the belt setup. Uh, it's very important that it's really tight. A loose belt isn't going to do you any good, so I'm going to show you guys the trick that I figured out to tighten that up. It actually works pretty well. So what I did was I just ran the belt on the course that it's supposed to go, but it's still really loose. So I tightened this down just enough to where you can pull this through. It's really, really tight, but you can pull it through and it won't spring back. So when you get it set to that tightness, you grab a set of channel locks, you grab one into the belt, and you pull. And you do that until it's as tight as you want it to be. And then you tighten down the screw. And if you did it right, I think that'll actually do it. And the belt's a little long, so I'll trim it down. But I think that trick is going to work out just fine. It's about that time where we got to assemble the Y-axis carriage. So we got a couple of pieces of angle profile that we're actually making into U-channel. So these are six inches in length in this inch and a half profile. And so I have a couple of plates here that I cut to size. And we're going to go ahead and attach these. And so we're going to do two total setups exactly like this, and then we will go ahead and put it together. You can probably tell just by looking at it that a lot goes into fabricating a carriage like this, but if you can break it down into its simplest form, it's not very complicated, it just takes a little while. So what is the simplest form? Obviously we know it's got to go across two one by one steel rails, these guys right here. So you start with the structure. We use the same angle profile we've been using the whole time for everything. So inch and a half angle profile, six inches length. And then I closed them out with 316 steel. So it pretty much just covers up the whole U-channel is what we're fabricating. And the way I attached them was with flathead screws from the inside. You know, the drill countersink tap, just like we've been doing the whole time. And then I ground the tails off so none of the tails are sticking up through here. And that was just a preference thing. I didn't want to look at them. And it makes it easier to mount other stuff, which we obviously have to do. Now when I attach these closeout panels, these outside ones that attach the two U-channels together, I just drilled them from the outside. No big deal. Plus, I kind of like the look if I'm honest with you. So, how does it work? It's a pretty cool little setup. It's not different from what we've been doing. The only difference is, is we're not using angle profile, we're using these square tubings in here. Works out pretty well. So, this is hypothetical. So let's say we have two bearings here, we have one here. We do it the opposite on the bottom. So we have two here and one here. So that way each tube is equally represented uh, in terms of one side to the other side. So it's gonna try to prevent any racking from happening in here. It's plenty tight. There's gonna be no problem with that. And I did one bearing on the bottom, two on the top. The reason is the weight of the gantry is pressing down on this tube, except for when you put the Z axis down, what is actually happening is the Z axis is pushing up against this top rail. So there's two bearings here taking the brunt of the load because when gravity's doing its thing, one bearing is plenty. 
but it's going to be more force from when you're actually putting the z-axis down that's why there's two up there the way we attach them it's quarter 20 all thread it's the same size as the bolts we're using it's just longer and it's pretty cheap it was two bucks a stick so it's really easy to go ahead and uh, use that it's convenient just got to throw nuts on there works out pretty well i hope this visual is explaining what we got going on because you can look at this all you want without the visual you can't really tell because it's kind of hard to get a good camera angle of what i actually did here actually i guess that camera angle isn't that bad but i still wanted you guys to have the visual maybe it'll help paint the picture in your head of what exactly we have going on we have our three bearings inside of our y-axis carriage and these are obviously going to be keeping the rail centered inside of here so now we have to install the bearings that are going to captivate the rail this way. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have a little bit of clearance, we're gonna have the rail, and then we're gonna have the bearings inside of here. And so the way we have to calculate that is we have to do the wall thickness, the spacing, the tube, and then the bearing. So the calculations are, it's 320 thou for the wall thickness. I want 100 thou of clearance. Our tube, which is not exactly an inch, but it's pretty darn close, four thousandths off. And then this is the radius for the bearing. So this measurement gives us where the center of the bearing needs to go. So we're going to take that measurement. We're going to use our calipers, which are set to that already. And we're going to use this to scribe the measurement on the wall. And then we're going to drill it out. And then the bearing should be exactly where we need them to be. And we're actually going to be doing that on the top and the bottom. I spent the last couple hours getting the alignment right on the y-axis carriage. It's a little bit of work. So the three bearings that are on the top and the bottom, you actually have to take the carriage off to adjust them. And the way that I adjust them is I have a bunch of shims that I made up. And you loosen up the bolt, you shove the shim into it, and then when you have good contact with this, you tighten it down. And it's kind of difficult. And like I said, it needs to be out of the assembly for it to work, but it definitely works. It takes a couple of tries, but it's going to be right. And these ones, the ones that are connected by the all thread, are actually a whole lot simpler to tighten. So all you do is you loosen them up, use the clamp to just grab onto the all thread, and then when you have the tension that you're looking for, you tighten the bolt back down again. No big deal. But I want to make it absolutely clear that obviously you need it to move, but any day of the week I'd rather have these super tight than have them super loose and inaccurate. Because tight, yeah, it's a little bit hard to move, but your accuracy is where it needs to be. And at the end of the day, accuracy is what CNC machines are all about. So make it tight. You can always throw more power at it later, but make sure that this thing is holding tolerances really well, because that's going to be a lot better of a final product for you. I know that I've mentioned it a couple of times before that the whole carriage assembly is relying on the gantry itself to hold them tight against the rail. So while I'm drilling everything in, the very first thing that I did was I set the height on this rail, because this is kind of the more load bearing rail. So I set the height on that rail consistent with the top. And then when I go to put these screws in, I use this chunk all thread. And so it's got a nut on each side. And so what that's doing is it's sucking both of the risers on the gantry together. And that way we have good contact on all the bearings on each side. So when I put the screws in, it's pretty much final. There's not gonna be a whole lot of adjustment. I mean, you can always remove the bolts or you can loosen them and make small adjustments but there's going to be no big changes after that. So you want to make sure you have everything exactly the way you want it. The drive for the Y axis is just a tiny bit different than the X axis. Instead of doing a continuous loop, this one has a closed loop where it has a close out on each end where it clamps down on the belt. We have our drive motor and then we have two idlers. So it's keeping pretty good tension on a pretty good amount of the pulley, which is what it's all about. The more teeth you can get on the belt, the better off you're going to be, the less slippage. And uh, it works pretty well. Now, none of this stuff is ideal. When I opened the box, this belt was a hell of a lot smaller than I was hoping it would be. It's probably going to break eventually, but it came with so much extra that I'm honestly not that worried about it. My biggest complaint easily is that these were supposed to be 8mm inside diameter, and they're about 5 and so I had to bore them out, and then I was not able to bore them out straight because there's a stupid sleeve in here that keeps spinning while I'm drilling, so it's really difficult to get that right. New ones are on the way. I wasn't going to let that hold my project up, so it's working, not ideal, but it's going to be eventually. I've never had or even messed around with a belt-driven CNC machine before. I had an idea of how I wanted to hook everything up, but I wasn't sure if it was actually going to work at the end of the day. 
And the trouble is, is you don't want to have sensitive electronics lying around in a shop where you're doing a bunch of fabrication. So I wasn't able to test anything. So this is the first time I really got to mess with it. And uh, this thing's pretty sweet. It's pretty responsive, pretty powerful. I think it's going to be all right. So this is all just testing. This is all at 1600 inches per minute right now. And uh, it's working out pretty good. Real smooth motion. There's a few bearings that still need to be dialed in. But I was telling you guys before, this is all really, really tight. And I said I really want it to be tight as opposed to loose because it's all about accuracy. And even tight, it's still working that well. So I'm actually really excited. It's a really productive day. I couldn't be happier. I don't like that noise very much, but it'll be okay. just running test code right now so it's not ripping along like crazy but when it really gets going it is crazy how fast this thing moves and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything it's kind of surprising how well these motors handle it because I was telling you guys before I made everything as tight as I could so it's not super easy to move it and this thing still doesn't mind ripping along I and mean, it really goes for it well from the outside I can admit that this seems like it's a really complicated build which obviously there's a lot that goes into building it. But if you were to look at it piece by piece, each individual piece isn't that complicated. So if you're able to take the time to just dedicate to doing each individual piece right, when you go to put them all together, you're gonna to end up with the whole package that is pretty stinking cool at the end of the day. So what I want you guys to take away from this, take your time, do it right. Don't be like me, my last CNC machine is kind of a pile of junk because I didn't design it and I didn't take my time. I wanted it running right away, and I'm still paying for it, which is why I gotta build another one. So, I think that's enough for tonight. I love that this already works. This thing's better than my last machine, and it's barely even working. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you guys out. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.